ever imagine what Earth was like billions of years ago? Like way before the dinosaurs even roamed. Well, today's deep dive is taking us back to a time when Earth was just starting out to explore a cataclysmic event that might have actually helped shape life as we know it. Hmm. That cataclysmic event that helped life. <laughs> That's pretty counterintuitive. Most people probably think about things like meteor impacts as purely destructive events. Right. Like instant game over. But the article we're diving into today suggests that things might not be so simple. What's the article called? It's titled, Mega Meteorite Tore Up Seabed and Boiled Earth's Oceans. And it's about this ancient meteorite, way bigger than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, and how it might have actually been crucial for life on Earth to flourish. Interesting. Okay, so set the stage for me. What was Earth like back then? Well, picture this. Earth billions of years ago. Basically a water world, right? Okay, I'm with you. Teeming with these super simple, single-celled organisms, life was just starting to kind of, you know, figure things out. And then, bam, this massive meteorite comes crashing in. They're calling it S2. Just how massive are we talking here? Okay, so think 200 times bigger than the dinosaur-killing meteorite. We're talking 40 to 60 kilometers wide. To put that in perspective, that's bigger than some countries. Wow, yeah, that's almost impossible to wrap my head around. Okay, so what happened next? I mean, an, an impact like that, did it just obliterate everything? The immediate aftermath was definitely chaotic. I mean, you can just imagine, right? Yeah. The article describes pulverized rock, like from the impact, getting ejected up into the atmosphere and basically forming this global cloud of molten rock droplets. Molten rock droplets. Yeah, like a rain cloud, but instead of water, it's molten rock mm -hmm. raining down on the planet. That's a terrifying thought. Totally. And then, of course, you have to think about the tsunami, right? Oh, yeah, a mega tsunami for sure. A colossal tsunami, unlike anything we've ever seen, ripping across the globe, tearing up the seafloor, and just inundating coastlines. Plus, the impact released so much energy that the oceans were literally boiling. Boiling. Yeah, boiling away, evaporating tens of meters of water. And the air temperatures, mm -hmm. they skyrocketed by 100 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, pretty apocalyptic stuff. It sounds absolutely devastating. But you said earlier that this event might have actually helped life. How is that even possible after all that? Well, that's the fascinating part. As destructive as the impact was on the surface, it might have also played a crucial role in churning up essential nutrients from deep within Earth. What kind of nutrients are we talking about? Well, think phosphorus. Super important for DNA and yeah. energy transfer in living organisms, right? So it's almost like the impact acted as this giant blender mixing up all these crucial ingredients for life. Okay, I can see how that might be beneficial in the long run. But what about that tsunami? It just seems like pure destruction. Well, the tsunami actually played a role too. Dredged up all this iron-rich water from the depths of the ocean, mm -hmm. bringing it to the surface. And iron, as you probably know, is a key component of so many enzymes and proteins, including the ones involved in photosynthesis. So even though the impact wiped out a ton of life, it also created the perfect conditions for the survivors to thrive. Exactly. It's like hitting the reset button on the planet. Those organisms that were left were suddenly in this nutrient-rich environment, almost like a broth, you know, packed with all the building blocks they needed. A broth for life. I like that. And that broth might have been what fueled their evolution and diversification. So maybe all that destruction wasn't the end of the story. It might have been just the beginning. Exactly. Almost like nature had this grand plan, you know, to just shake things up, really push life beyond those simple single-celled organisms. And from what we're learning about S2, these massive impacts might have been like the key to making that happen. So it's not just about surviving the impact itself, but like what comes after. Yes. The aftermath created this, this incredible opportunity for whatever was left. Exactly. And remember all that iron we talked about mm -hmm. brought up by the tsunami? Right. Well, imagine you're a tiny microbe living in the ocean at this time. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you're surrounded by all this abundance of iron. Which they need for photosynthesis. Yeah, a vital ingredient. So this could have been like a total game changer for those early organisms, giving them a huge energy boost. Okay, yeah. I'm starting to see how this could have led to like bigger changes in life down the line, but I'm still kind of stuck on the, the sheer resilience of those early organisms. Yeah. To survive an event that boiled the oceans. That's yeah. mind-blowing. It really is. And it's not just surviving that initial heat blast, right? Remember, the impact threw up this massive cloud of debris. Uh, right, blocking out the sun. Yeah, which would have blocked out the sun probably for years, maybe even decades. Plunging the planet into darkness and cold. Exactly. So it's a testament to how adaptable life is, you know, its ability to find a way even in the most challenging circumstances. 
So we've got these early organisms surviving the heat, the darkness, and then thriving in this newly enriched environment. What does all this mean for the bigger picture of life on Earth? How does it all connect? That's where things get really interesting, I think. Scientists are starting to see these early violent impacts, not just as destructive events, but like as crucial steps in the evolution of life. Almost like necessary steps. Yeah, it's a bit like a sculptor chipping away at a block of stone. Right? <laughs> Each impact, while seemingly destructive, is actually helping to shape and define like the final form. I like that analogy. It makes me think about how those impacts, as devastating as they were, might have actually paved the way for more complex life to emerge. Right. It's like, if those impacts hadn't happened, would life on Earth be different today? I mean, is that even a question we can answer? It's certainly a possibility. I mean, those impacts totally reshaped the planet's environment, which in turn influenced the course of evolution. It's hard to say for certain what would have happened without them, but it's a fascinating thought experiment for sure. And this brings up an interesting question for you, our listener. Think about the world around you. Where else do you see examples of events or circumstances that, while seemingly negative or destructive, might actually lead to something positive or beneficial? That's a great question to ponder. It makes you realize that sometimes destruction can be a catalyst for change and growth, not just in nature, but in our own lives as well. Okay, so let's take a step back and recap for a sec. We started by imagining early Earth as this peaceful water world. And then out of nowhere, bam! <laughs> Meteorite S2 crashes the party, triggers this, like, global apocalypse. Yeah, hard to even grasp the sheer scale of destruction. You know, we're talking molten rock raining from the sky, tsunamis that make anything in history look tiny, oceans literally boiling away. But then there's this twist. This twist that just makes the whole story so fascinating. Out of all that destruction, life found a way to not only survive, but to really thrive. Right, like it's amazing the impact churned up all these vital nutrients like from deep inside the earth. And it kind of created this like fertilizer for the planet. And that massive tsunami, right? It played a key role too. Yeah. Bringing up all that iron rich water from deep down. Exactly. And those early organisms, those little guys were able to actually use those nutrients, especially the iron to, you know, power the growth and evolution. Mm -hmm. It really makes you wonder, what would life on Earth even look like today if, like, S2 had just completely missed us? That's the question that really gets to the heart of this whole deep dive, I think. It challenges us to, like, rethink how we see the evolution of life, you know? Maybe those early years of Earth, with all the chaos and upheaval, maybe they weren't just this destructive phase. Maybe they were actually the key to shaping all the diversity and complexity of life we see today. It's a humbling thought, for sure. Like, sometimes what looks like the ending is just the beginning of something totally new. And as you go about your day, you know, we encourage you to kind of think about this idea. Look around. What other examples can you find where destruction or chaos actually ended up leading to something new and unexpected? It's a powerful concept and one we hope you'll keep thinking about long after this deep dive. And if you enjoyed this exploration of early Earth and the impact of Meteorite S2, make sure you subscribe for more deep dives into all sorts of surprising corners of knowledge. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep looking up at the stars with wonder.